Hello, this is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today in our procedural skills series, we will discuss pigtail catheter placement. Ehrlich, otherwise known as a pneumothoraces, in the neonatal population can be a deadly situation. Neonates also have many risk factors that contribute to Ehrlich. These include, but are not limited to, respiratory distress syndrome, mechanical ventilation, sepsis, pneumonia, aspiration of meconium, blood, or amniotic fluid, or a congenital malformation. In addition, spontaneous pneumothoraces can occur in 1-2% to of otherwise normal appearing neonates. In the NICU and on transport, the staff must be prepared to diagnose and treat pneumothoraces in a timely manner. Because of the close proximity of vital structures, supple chest wall, and frail lung tissue, a firm understanding of the anatomy of the chest is imperative. You must realize that the chest contains two lungs and the mediastinal organs and vessels. Both the mediastinum and the chest are lined with two sets of pleura, the visceral and the parietal. The parietal pleura lines the chest wall and the thoracic side of the diaphragm. A continuation of the parietal pleura surrounds the heart and mediastinum. The visceral pleura surrounds the lungs. The primary function of the pleura is protective. In other words, it prevents the lungs from rubbing against the ribs and other organs, avoiding damage by friction, and therefore providing a barrier to infection by sealing one cavity from another. In addition, because each lung has a separate set of pleura, it helps prevent both lungs from collapsing if air enters into one side. Now there's a moistened space between these two pleura, which is known as the pleural cavity. Because of this space, the pleura ride atop each other like two pieces of plastic wrap that have been stuck together with a thin film of liquid. With the right circumstances though, air, blood, chyle, or exudate can enter between the two layers. Neonates have little compensatory reserve when they develop a pneumothorax. Therefore, the NICU staff must be able to quickly and accurately assess a patient in respiratory distress. When this happens, a cascade of signs and symptoms are found upon physical examination, or changes in vital signs may develop. This may include increasing respiratory distress, rapid breathing, grunting, nasal flaring, and chest wall retractions. If a tension pneumothorax has occurred, a patient may be tachycardic, bradycardic, hypotensive, or even cyanotic. Upon auscultation, breath sounds could be decreased over the affected side. In addition, heart sounds may be distanced or muffled or shifted to the opposite side of the pneumothorax with a concurrent shift in the point of maximal impulse. A quick, non-invasive technique to assess for pneumothoraces is transillumination of the chest wall. In this instance, a cool light source is placed against the side of the chest wall with the pneumothorax. The light illuminates or radiates across the chest as seen here, rather than simply forming a halo around the light source. Conclusive evidence for a pneumothorax in the neonate is a chest x-ray. If the neonate has a pneumothoraces, the chest x-ray film will demonstrate air in the pleural space. This air on chest x-ray will appear dark black in the areas where the air is present. In addition, the lung on the affected side will be reduced in size. The heart and the mediastinal contents may be shifted as well. A pneumothorax can be treated in several ways, and if small, non-invasive measures may be considered. But if there is a large or tension pneumo, the initial step would be needle thoracentesis, but if the pneumo remains large or continues to reaccumulate, the next step would be placing a chest tube, such as a pigtail catheter. To place a pigtail catheter, you'll need to gather your equipment and supplies. And keep in mind, this will be a sterile procedure. Therefore, you will need gloves, hat, mask, and gown, in addition to sterile towels. Next you'll grab an 8.5 French Furman Plural Drainage Set. Within this drainage set is an introducer needle, a dilator, a wire, the pigtail, a three-way stopcock, and a cone-shaped suction adapter to apply to the suction on your water seal. You will need to add a 5 and 20 ml syringe, 
skin cleanser to cleanse the site, as well as Tegaderm to secure the catheter. Next, you'll want to choose your landmark. With affected side up, you'll choose the fourth intercostal space, anterior axillary line. Placing your patient affected side up cannot be overemphasized as it helps the air to rise as seen in this lateral decubitus. If not emergent and time permits, be sure to pre-medicate prior to placing your pigtail catheter. As you prepare mentally to place the needle, remember you will be sliding over the top of the rib, not underneath, in order to avoid the neurovascular bundle. You'll now want to cleanse your site using hospital approved cleanser, such as chloroprep or betadine. You can then drape your patient with sterile towels and mark your landmark once again. At this point, you can choose your 18 gauge IV catheter or the introducer needle in the kit as seen here. You'll enter the skin going over the top of the rib. You'll advance while pulling negative pressure on the syringe and stop advancing the needle when air is reached. At this point, you remove the syringe and prepare to place your wire. To place the wire, you will retract the wire into the plastic introducer, as seen here. You will then place the introducer into the hub of the needle and begin advancing the wire until you see the silver portion pass into the plastic introducer. At this point, you will then slowly advance until you feel resistance. Now you can start retracting that introducer and you will see that silver portion just outside the hub. You now gently retract all the plastic off the wire. At this point, you can then, with positive pressure on the wire, begin to remove the introducer needle or 18 gauge IV catheter, depending on which one you have chosen. Remember to put positive pressure on the wire in order to not remove it from the chest. Keep note of where that silver line is on the introducer wire and make sure it stays in the same position. After removing the introducer needle or IV catheter, you will now want to thread the dilator down over the guide wire. You'll put this dilator down through until you reach the skin keeping positive pressure on the wire the entire time. You will then carefully push the dilator in until you feel a change in pressure, and then twist the dilator to dilate the skin, the muscles, and the pleura. Once dilated, you can then remove the dilator, keeping the guide wire secured. The dilation process is critical. If the site is not well dilated, the catheter will not advance. The next step is to now place the pigtail on the wire and into the patient's skin. You will do this by threading the wire through the center of the pigtail. This often takes two people when you first learn to do this. You slowly thread that pigtail down onto the wire while pushing positive pressure onto the wire so that it is not removed from the patient. You will thread the pigtail catheter over the guide wire until all portholes are inside the skin and pleural cavity. It should seat nicely on the patient's chest. You can then remove the guide wire. Suturing is often not needed as the skin acts as a vise around the catheter. The provider may choose to place a three-way stopcock between the catheter and the 20 ml syringe for rapid removal of air or frequent fluid sampling for analysis. Otherwise, you can take that stopcock off and attach the suction adapter located in the tray. You can then connect to the preassembled drainage system and look for bubbling in the water seal. Throughout the procedure, you'll want to perform cardiopulmonary monitoring and assess the patient before and after the procedure is completed. You'll also want to obtain a chest x-ray for verification of catheter placement and resolution of the pneumothoraces. You'll want to make sure that that catheter is not too shallow as seen here or too deep as seen here. The ultimate goal is that the catheter is curled up within the center of the chest on the affected side with the pneumothorax resolving. Once placement has been confirmed and you've cleansed the site of any residual cleaner, you can then place a tegaderm over the top of the site 
as you will not need to place Vaseline gauze or a suture as the skin acts as a vise around the catheter and the Vaseline gauze may change the integrity of the catheter. Pigtail catheters have been in use in the NICU for several decades. And from this long-term use, the data collected concludes that pigtail catheters are quick, safe, and effective and have few complications as well as reduce discomfort to the patient during insertion. As with any invasive procedure, complications can occur, but can be avoided if special attention is paid to landmarks and pain control. These complications can include pain, infection, bleeding, persistence of air or fluid in the pleural space, lung perforation, myocardial perforation, severing of the phrenic nerve, liver trauma with hemoperitoneum, tears of subclavian vessels, and thymic trauma with hemorrhage. Now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual clinical practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.